And not far away from the Chinese mainland, it's raining missiles in the Korean peninsula. No prizes for guessing who's responsible for this one. North Korea. In the last two weeks, Pyongyang has test-fired four ballistic missiles. Four. These back-to-back tests have put regional powers on edge. South Korea and Japan are worried. They're warning against a possible escalation. The United States has also issued a strong response. It says that these tests signal the return of brinkmanship, of unwarranted provocations from Kim Jong-un. The question is... What does the leader of North Korea want? What is Kim Jong-un trying to prove? Here's a report. North Korea is betting big on nukes. It sees them as the most potent tool of power projection. Every time it faces a security dilemma, the risk of further diplomatic isolation or questions about its stagnating economy, out come the missiles to reassure the leader, Kim Jong-un. This year, his need for reassurance seems to have snowballed. North Korea has test-fired four missiles in the last two weeks alone. The first test came on the 5th of January. Pyongyang fired an unidentified projectile off its eastern coast. It reportedly precisely hit a target 700 kilometers away. The Japanese Prime Minister described it as a possible ballistic missile. Earlier, North Korea launched what could be a ballistic missile in response to this situation. I gave instructions. First is to make every effort to collect and analyze information and to provide prompt, accurate information to the people. Second is to thoroughly confirm the safety of ships, airplanes and aircrafts. I have just instructed these points. Six days later came the second test. Another ballistic missile was fired. Photographs showed Kim Jong-un dressed in a black leather coat, personally overseeing the test with binoculars. He was also seen discussing a few charts with his officials more like pretending to. The U.S. State Department described this test as a threat to the international community. The launch clearly does highlight the destabilizing impact of the DPRK's illicit weapons programs. Uh, It violates multiple UN Security Council resolutions. It poses a threat to uh, the DPRK's neighbors uh, and to the broader international community. January 14th, the third missile test took place. This time, a railway-borne missile was test-fired. It was launched from the top of an olive green train. Interestingly, the test took place on the same day, when Pyongyang expressed discontent over new American sanctions. North Korean observers described the test as a clear retaliation. North Korea is sending a message that they will not give up their right to missiles and will fight back against U.S.-imposed sanctions. And on Monday, the 17th of January, the fourth test was conducted. A tactical guided missile was fired from the country's west. It reportedly hit a target located on the eastern coast. This time, South Korea has issued a statement. It has urged its rogue neighbor to choose peace over missiles. We urge North Korea to choose peacemaking dialogue rather than missile launches for peace and stability on the Korean Peninsula. Experts say this is Kim's attention-seeking tactic. He's trying to send a message to the Biden administration. Unlike his predecessor Donald Trump, who even visited the DMZ in 2019, Joe Biden has shown no willingness to engage with North Korea. He has refused to ease sanctions unless North Korea takes real steps towards de-escalation. In Kim's rulebook, provocation is the best way to get attention. He's grappling with a broken economy made worse by the pandemic. He's using missiles as bargaining chips, hoping to extract a compromise from Washington. 
Unfortunately for him, Biden's plate is full. He's dealing with bigger, more serious adversaries like China and Russia. Bureau Report, We On, World is One. We On is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.